Hello everyone, this is Sean Phoenix with West Waterway Volleyball Club. I know during these trying times, we're trying to figure out ways to get extra reps for our athletes, and we're missing volleyball a great deal. Today we wanted to put together a video for everyone who's curious on how to build these different volleyball return boxes. We have uh, our tools set up here, and we'll go ahead and give you a description on each tool that we used. They're not necessarily needed for the job, but we're going to tell you what we use and you can probably make it work from what you have at home. We're going to do two different versions of the box. One lays fat, flat and is on a caster wheel so it can roll it around and the other one is just a static box. So. I hope you enjoy the video and we're going to get to building one in front of you and showing you how we put it together the most efficient way that we know how to do. Remember, I'm not a carpenter. I'm just the media director for the West Florida Ways and the assistant coach for one of the teams. But if I can do this, I think anybody can. So the first thing that we're going to do after we cut our end pieces, we're going to screw them in. We've been using one screw per end. As you build the box, it's easier to put the screws in after you stand it up straight. Otherwise, you're going to be here screwing in screws you don't need to. Um, so for now, we're just going to start putting these in. Now we're going to cut the end piece for the top box. You notice we're not using any tape measure or anything like that. I mean, this thing doesn't have to be perfect. It's just got to be functional. As we start making the base for the box, it's important to remember that you're going to have a six inch inset here that we talked about before. And then down here, since we already have four inches that extend out below our, our plywood, we're going to leave an inch and a half on the board that we cut for the inner box so we can then create the, the board that goes laterally from here. tape measures on here you don't have to you can if you want but we find that it's easier just to cut one board and make an identical board on the other end so one of the things that we we learned when we were building these boxes is that you can use this end board to make the inside part of your support box with one small detail that we found out kind of the hard way when you make your marks for the board itself, like we've done here, what we've done is we've come in about a quarter or maybe an eighth of an inch. That way you've got room to fit inside the box. Also, when you're putting your inner support box together, make sure that you give a little bit of clearance. Don't make it snug up against the outside of the top bar of the box because then it's going to have a hard time closing whenever you try to collapse it. Now, if you're not collapsing your box, this is not a big deal. together the base of the platform for the box so there's no need to screw screws up from underneath we're gonna make all these screws into the top of the box or into the base of the box so they're gonna put, be put together that way Part of your frame built, what you can do is you can just turn it over and put one end on the other. That way you've got support for where it needs to be. Another trick that we learned is take a piece of wood and block it in behind so that way when you're pushing your screws in, it doesn't push the, the box forward. Now 
Now you have the basic outline of your base. It should fit in there snugly. It should not have any clearance issues. It shouldn't be too wobbly. You shouldn't be re-checking all your stuff. Okay? It's important that we leave these gaps where they are simply because we need this space that you can't really see right now. You'll see it in a later video. Uh, to make sure it collapses. Now, if you're not gonna collapse it, you're just building a solid one, this isn't important, but I would suggest building them this way just in case you want the option to fold them flat. Now it's time to put the bottom pivot point holes in so we can put our bolts in here. That gives us the ability to stand the, the volar ball return system up or lay it flat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure three inches from the bottom of this board, make our mark. And then we're gonna go and do it on the other side also. Three inches on each side. We're gonna be as accurate as we can with these marks to make sure that the pivot points align. So we're gonna make a mark of three inches here. We're gonna make sure we square that off. We just wanna ensure that everything folds and collapses easily without any warping. Um, we're using um, quarter inch bolts, I believe. 5 16 bolts, 5 16 drill bit. You don't have to bore out. Make sure that you bore out a little bit when you drill these holes because you want to give them a little bit of play. If they're tight, it makes them harder to collapse. Find the center point, and you're going to go all the way through. Find the center point, and you're going to go all the way through both boards. chose to use washers and wing nuts simply because the wing nuts come off easier so if we ever want to just pull the box apart we can just pull the wing nuts off. Alright this brings me to what's happening over here brings me to a very important point right uh, if you have a cross threaded bolt that came in your package. The best thing that you can do with a cross threaded bolt is throw it somewhere to never see it again. After you put all this first piece together, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to check your pivot. Right? You're going to have a little resistance from the board down here, the plywood. It's going to get stuck a little, but that's good. It gives extra support. And when we put our braces in for here, it's going to not make a difference at all. So now it's time to build our support braces that hold the, the volleyball return system at a 45 degree angle. We've been working with a lot of different angles and we found that 45 is just the best possible one for our uses and for the way our girls hit. So I, you can try a different angle. We're just saying from experience, 45 degrees seems to be what's working. Now, the way we start this is we have to pull up our box, right? We'll have pops it around there. And what eventually happens is I'm going to take this triangle and it's set at 45. You can guesstimate it if you want. But what we also found is, what we also found is down here on the end that you may not be able to see is it's pushing into our wood. It's fine. It's a little tight, but it is what it is. The next thing is, is where do we put these? Where are we going to want to put these support braces? Remember that when we're finished, we're going to build arches here for our casters if you want to use casters. If you're not using casters, the placement of this is not really all that critical. We're going to go ahead and assume that we're going to use a caster system because we're going to build this one for rollers. And we're going to go ahead and mark this board right here. Right? And then to make sure that we're on our right spot, on both sides, we're going to mark the wood here and we're going to measure off of our triangle the distance from here down to where our board stops. If you don't get this piece right, 
What'll end up happening is you'll have two boards in two different spaces and your board will not be level as far as your surface goes and you'll end up just drilling a bunch of holes. So we'll show you how this goes and then start recording again after we get it done. The last time we broke away, we talked to you about these support pieces that go from here to elevate the box. One thing we're gonna put in the description and we're gonna say right here in the video is from this end of the box until where we put the hole in for the uh, support pieces is 22.5 inches. Again, we've got our triangle in here set to 45 degrees. So essentially what we can do is we can start drilling these holes through both of the boards to make sure that we're going to be exactly where we need to be. First, I'm gonna take my pencil over there and I'm gonna mark the line for the angle here. We don't need all this excess wood. So that's the line that we'll cut at. And this is the line where we'll, we'll drill in. So I'm gonna start drilling. I'll pop both these pieces together. And we're gonna make sure, the one thing that we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab my level. We wanna make sure that these boards are level. If you don't have your boards level up and down, going to make, again, if you don't make them even, your platform is going to be leaned one way or another and it's going to give a bad response off the volleyball. So we're going to make sure that we're level here. And once we're level there, we're going to go ahead and mark. And we're going to go ahead and drill. We want to just get it started there. And we'll make sure that we have our, our board back to level again here. All right, that way we've just got it started. And we're going to go ahead and drill the bottom bolt here. And we're just going to go through this board and touch the other board, making sure that this stays level so we have everything where we need it to be. on our board then we can take the board away and go ahead and finish out our holes keep in mind that the tops here get a five and a half inch bolt or five inch bolt you're gonna need and you might as well go ahead and buy them all six inches because it doesn't matter if they're too long but these bottom pieces get six inch bolts now we've already done one side of the platform support system. We're gonna go ahead and use the board that we used for this side to make the uh, template for the other side. move on to building your caster support. At this point, if you wanted to stop and just bolt all this together without making it collapsible or not putting on any wheels, the only thing that you would have left to do is put some support system and screw in extra screws into your base, right, your platform. Um, for now, we'll just go ahead and put the casters on. We're gonna go ahead and use three inch swivel casters. Um, a little forethought would have made it to where we got casters that have locks on them. We didn't. Um, so if you're going to build these with wheels, it's a good idea to get some locking casters. Luckily for us, I think the, the girls are just going to be playing back here in the backyard, so I don't think it's going to roll a whole lot. So hopefully that doesn't become an issue. If it does, then um, I guess we'll have to figure it out from there. So we're going to go ahead and cut the wood for these casters. Um, yesterday we made one, so basically all we're doing is making 45 degree angles with our triangle and essentially cutting the wood at that part, at that point. You can do one of two things. It's easiest just to make a small little notch, maybe of an eighth of an inch, and then just start creating your pieces.
Now we're going to put on the casters. The casters, like I said, are the three inch uh, swiveling casters and we're going to use um, inch and three quarter screws. We've been trying to get the screws into the corner uh, and hit the two by fours. Not really successful. So the thing is, they're going to hold fine. Uh, as long as you're not running through grass all the time like we probably are, you should be okay. show you on the video is we cut a hole for uh, the rope we wanted to put a rope on the box so the girls could drag it around so we're gonna go ahead and show you where we drilled the holes and how we did them and what we used and then we'll put the rope in uh, then we're gonna flip the box over and put the rest of the screws in so you can kind of see how it, how easy this thing is all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a piece of wood and we're basically just gonna prop it up right here Five eighths. This is a five eighths uh, wood bore bit. Basically allows you to cut circles in wood. box overall time to make this thing um, without video and, and uh, without instructions probably about an hour and a half um, maybe two hours if you're just kind of learning how to build them um, total amount of um, cost of materials is around 60 bucks or 70 bucks with the casters if you were to build this thing without casters and without pivot points probably put it together for around 35 to 40 dollars depending on what you have at your house to put it together with um, they're great for everything. Um, so basically we're gonna flip it over now and we're gonna show uh, the, the last part of the process which is reinforcing all the screws that we already put in. It's better to do it when it's flipped over. You'll see that during the video. But it's a lot easier to put screws in once it's flipped on its other side. See, this is the one we built first. Um, it's laying flat. You could store that, put it up against the wall. It doesn't take up any space. One of the things that we recommend doing, or what we're going to do for ours, um, is we're going to we're going to wood treat these so they last longer than just a couple of months. I'm sure sitting outside, they're going to get pretty uh, weather worn pretty quick. So we're going to go ahead after the video. We're going to treat these, and we're going to um, 
you know, make sure that they have some extended use because we don't know how long it's going to last. The next thing is, if you have any questions on how to build these, please feel free to, to inbox me at West Florida Waves or just my personal inbox if you have it. I want to thank my dad for putting up with me during this build, and I want to thank our amazing cameraman, Parker, uh, my son. I guess he found a new hobby for the coronavirus quarantine. Um, later on, when the girls get done with schoolwork, we're going to record some videos of the boxes being used. That way you can kind of get an idea of how they work. And from everyone at the West Florida Waves, I think I can speak for all the coaches and the staff. We miss you terribly. We hope to get the water ball season rolling again. But like Coach Dawson always tells me, we'll roll with what we got. Uh, look forward to seeing everybody again. Hopefully we can get that back to practice soon. And God bless everyone. Have a good day. And later on, we'll tack on some, some footage of Brennan Briley, the twins from 12 Power, uh, hitting into the water ball boxes. Thank you. We miss our wave family.